It's the end of the first week in July, and I thought it'd be a great time to go on a quick little garden tour. And I wanted to focus on this new island border in the front. So this is the first year that this border was made. It just got uh, created last spring, or last fall. And uh, the first thing I want to point out are these huge marigolds. So I grew these specifically because I want to make a garland for my front door. But as you can see, those marigolds are way out of proportion for the uh, Japanese maple. But you know what? <laughs> That's all right. It's kind of funny. And then I've got some sea holly, but you can see that there's kind of a gaping hole here. Sea holly, and in the back there, I've got some poppies that I grew from seed that I got from my friend Bernadette. And then I'm happy to report that the Kiss Me Over the Garden Gate is filling in really nicely. I had some problems with some aphids, but I just took those off with some water and everything is looking really nice now. One of the new plants that I planted was some pestamen here. And I planted that so that once these rose campions, these pink flowers are gone, that can kind of fill in that space. And the creeping thyme is starting to bloom now. And then we've got some delphinium in the back there. That bright blue color is looking nice. We've also got some lavender in the back there that is starting to bloom. I grew these sea holly from seed, and they're just starting to bloom as well. And then I had an area here that was, I had a big, uh, space here and what I did was I filled this in with some white swan cone flowers so you can see those those are starting to come along the yarrow in the back coronation gold that is really looking great I think that's my favorite thing in this garden it did grow the tall verbena from seed you can kind of see it above the yarrow there so I finally figured out how to get that to germinate and I did the cold stratification in soil blocks and put them in my freezer um, for a month or so. And then those germinated nicely, actually. So I'm happy about that as well. And I'm looking forward to those filling in even more. I love that plant. It's a great plant. I have some Dusty Miller that I grew from seed. <clears throat> These elderberry plants are trying to grow. The deer I didn't realize the deer liked those, but you can see from this one that the deer does enjoy those. And then one of the Coreopsis that I planted from seed survived the bunny. You can see it just started blooming there. And then this is just the other side of this border here. You can see the yarrow, the delphinium, I've got some native plants here. This is native bee balm that I got as small little plants. They're starting to fill in. And then I planted some zinnia seeds. Those are the seeds there that are just starting to poof out there. And then I've got another native. There's a few of them scattered throughout here. That's a prairie smoke plant. And then these poppies are still blooming. So I got these again from my friend Bernadette, and what a pretty flower that is, so unusual. And it matches the color of the Japanese maple perfectly, so that's kind of cool. We've been pretty fortunate. We've gotten quite a bit of rain um, in this part of the summer, and so as you can see, the turf is looking uncharacteri uncharacteristically nice nice and green so that's always a blessing. I love these summers when we get lots of rain and if we come in here and open up the back gate you can see how the back garden is looking. The thing that's new now is that uh, the Annabelle hydrangeas are blooming so those always look nice in the garden and then I did manage to finally get around to trimming the hornbeam hedges so those just got a fresh cut yesterday so those are looking a little bit more tidy. So I do love it when these Annabelle hydrangeas are blooming and this season they look really nice because like I said we've gotten lots of rain and things are just filling out really nicely. It's always great when we get rain. And then this is the little 
woodland border area that I fixed up, kind of straightened up a little bit. And that's that's looking nice. The um, Sun King plants are starting to fill out, and this is the drift of ferns that I put, put in. And I like this kind of bluish color with the chartreuse is the color scheme that we're going there. All right, so if we walk around here, this is the shade border, the Mary Garden. And again, you can see that the Annabelle hydrangeas are blooming. And the Brunera looks great. That's the Brunera there. And the Hostas. I did put plant some polka dot plants here. This is a bit dry, so these plants are taking a little bit of time to fill out, but they're starting to fill out. So we've got the hellebores there and the lamian filling out nicely with the ground cover, Solomon seal, variegated Solomon seal. And then the daisies, the Shasta daisies have started blooming here in this garden. You can see drifts of white flowers there. So I'm glad, um, and of course the daisies, because we lost the pine tree, the daisies are actually happier because they're getting a bit more sunshine. And again, as we come along here, so at the end of the Mary border, and then again, <laughs> that's the tree that I lost because of the um, ice storm that we had. And I still, this corner of the garden is a place I need to work work at. This used to be totally hidden and I used to kind of keep, you can see I keep all my extra stuff back here. So I have like extra patio pavers and wheelbarrows back there, but you know, now you can see it all so I need to come up with a different plan. And then this is a look at the Mary Garden from the other direction here. So things are starting to fill out nicely. The green that you see here are the new forget-me-nots seedlings that are starting to come up. I'll let those grow and then I'll move them into place in the garden uh, a little bit later in the season. So everything is looking good with the, I love those Annabelle hydrangeas. I realize they're a little bit, a uh, little bit getting pretty huge actually. And then um, I'm happy to report that we're starting to see some green on the um, boxwood hedge that I pruned up. You can see like how it's starting to get some green on the top there. So it looks like that's going to be just fine. The Japanese maples. And again, I'm happy to report that the grass is all green. Now here's an update on my woodland border. So again, I found out that the, um, the bunny or the groundhog was eating the um, meadow rue in the back. So this border is just starting to fill out a little bit and I've been purposely not watering back here, although we have gotten rain, but this area is really quite sandy. And so you can see those plants are doing really pretty well. So what we've got here is we've got this native white um, flowering turtle head, we've got the meadow rue in the back, wild ginger, this is Hucra Americana. That is a native to this area. I've got some anemones there, Canadian anemones, and some geranium. And this section here is what this is all going to look like once it gets filled in because there's some native uh, geraniums there. I've got some variegated Solomon seal my Japanese maple, and then the coleus are starting to fill out on the vertical garden. So those are looking really nice. I like the orange color there because I think it goes nicely with the highlights, the underneath leaf highlights of the Japanese maple. So here's a look at the, the back garden. Again, I don't know. Those pine trees really make me sad every time I look at them. So I'm going to just put the camera down and keep going here. But um, yeah, so everything is looking pretty good so far. It's been a pretty nice summer. As we come along here, we will take you to the side yard. So underneath the arbor here. And in this area, I've got 
standard form of Rose and Rose of Sharon trees. These are just starting to bud and they get like a mauve colored bloom. They look really pretty in the uh, middle to the end of July. And then that brings us back around to the front. And this is a bunch of native plants, a bunch of sunflowers, and a bunch of zinnias that I planted here, as well as big drifts of iris. And then along the, the wall here, I've got some vines and uh, love, in the, uh, love in the Puff vine. And then these are native um, petunias that are planted there. Now, as you can imagine, this area by the house is harsh. I mean, this is like really sandy soil, even though I've added compost to it. This just gets baked in the sun. And these native petunia plants are really able to handle it pretty well. So those are doing quite well. The zinnias are just starting to bud up. There are different shades of pinks and purples, I believe. You can see there I've got a couple, couple that just started blooming there. I normally don't film this area because of my neighbor's cars there, but I do love this. Um, this is kind of, I had a, this should all be filled in with bee balm, but um, the groundhog that lives there like ate all of that in the spring. But you can see I'm just starting to get it to come back up again. So that's pretty nice. I've got native Joe pie weed. And then you can see the clematis in the back there that's just starting to bloom. And then this brings us back around to the front border. And the window boxes are starting to fill out. These are purple heart plants that I saved the cuttings from the previous season and coleus plants that I grew from seed. I've got some astilbe that are planted in the front there. More purple heart in the urns. And then this front section is just filled with the yellow fringe leaf bleeding heart, the Corydalis lutea. And again, the bright chartreuse coleus with the purple heart plant. So we've got the silver sage and then the new seedlings of the silver sage. I want that to fill in along the whole side there. And then that brings us back around to the other side. And there you go. So thanks for joining me on the tour of the garden. That's it for this video. And we'll see you in the next one. Ooh,